button our fellowship. Uh, thank God for those of you who are here, uh, those who are on their way, and also those who are watching by way of the internet. Uh, we thank God for all of you. Uh, <clears throat> just <clears throat> a couple of quick announcements. We will be we will be having our Founders Day uh, July 21st, and we will <clears throat> be uh, doing that. It'll be six years now since we've been in the ministry, and it's uh, been a blessing. Uh, and so we thank God for uh, for that uh, to be able to be in ministry and be used as a a vessel, as a tool of uh, 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 edification uh, for the purpose of God's will. So we thank God for that. We thank uh, would not have been, have been possible. For not all of you, those who are here physically, and also those who are here uh, by way of internet, and so again we thank God for all of you. Uh, it's it's really been a blessing. Uh, it's really been a blessing to uh, to teach the word of truth and to uh, not only teach truth but also to meet uh, so many people along the way. Uh, I was just speaking to a brother earlier today who uh, is a Seahawks, big Seahawks fan. Uh, he's been rightly dividing the word for 14 years now, uh, and I got a chance to, 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 to speak with him earlier about uh, the word of truth and rightly dividing the word of God, and then uh, being able to connect with people, uh, not only from the things, you know, playing football naturally, but now being able to also uh, connect spiritually as well. So that's, that's been a blessing. I know uh, it's been a journey for me. Uh, just personally, being able to uh, connect with so many people around the world, uh, being able to answer so many questions and, and be able to be a blessing to others. Uh, and again, that's been a truly a blessing for me, and I, I truly thank God for that. And again, it's an testament to, to your faithfulness, uh, those of you who are here, and also to those of you who are watched by way of internet. Uh, so again, uh, also for those people who have talked bad about me and rejected me, I thank God for you too. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because it, again, it keeps me studying, it keeps me going. So again, I appreciate you as well. Uh, also, <clears throat> so we'll be celebrating our Founders Day on July 21st. Uh, we're in discussions now on July 20th. Uh, we're going to have some type of fun day here. And I think we're gonna play the Jeopardy on that Saturday. Uh, and we're gonna play Jeopardy, and then we're gonna have games, we're gonna have food and all of that on Saturday. Uh, so that when people come, they they'll have something to do on Saturday uh, as opposed to just coming here to come to church and that's it. Uh, so we'll, we're planning on doing that on Saturday and we'll have food, uh, drinks, refreshments, all of that type of stuff uh, uh, on, on that Saturday. And I think we've come up with the idea to play Jeopardy on that Saturday. I don't think I'll be streaming. So the people online, I think you're gonna miss out this particular time. Uh, so you'll have to be here for that. Uh, uh, and so I think the people that are watching will miss out on that one, but I will do it again online <clears throat> in the near future. Uh, so, so that's the, the plan, I think, that we're going to come up with just to kind of uh, incorporate a fun day uh, as we celebrate uh, uh, six years in ministry. Uh, and so, again, we appreciate that. Uh, also, let's continue to pray for Dennis. Uh, and Susan, let's continue to pray for them. Uh, also, for those people that have been reaching out to me, uh, I really appreciate that uh, about their uh, the status of his health and, and the status of uh, uh, her with the loss of her brother and her mom so so soon. Uh, and so again, for those who have been reaching out to me, I really do appreciate that. And those who have sent cards and those things, uh, you don't have to do this. But again, I just want to thank those people who have. Uh, uh, again, I don't want people to feel obligated to do anything. Uh, uh, that had that you have to spend money to do, okay? Uh, because that's not what this is all about. But again, for those people who did send in uh, uh, cards and things of that nature, I know they appreciate it, uh, and I also appreciate it as well. Uh, so again, I, I thank God for all of you, uh, <clears throat> and we'll be continuing to pray for uh, uh, Dennis and also for Susan. Uh, I think I, I spoke with Dennis the other day, and I think I was saying something about prayer. Uh, uh, and that he pointed out to me, and I want to make a correction, uh, because again, I think last week when I was talking about prayer, I was saying how God does not change things in the physical, uh, and I, I want people to understand just because somebody may hear it and run the, run the opposite way with it, uh, God always answers the prayer of the believer. 
uh, our answer to all things is his grace and his peace, okay? The peace that which surpasses all understanding, okay? It may not be the physical thing that you want, uh, but he will always grant us with his peace, okay? And so I wanted to clarify that uh, because Dennis was listening and he said he pointed some things out to me, so I wanted to make that correction. I don't want you to think that prayer does not do anything, okay? I wanted to really specify that prayer, all right? God always answers the prayer of the believer and he gives us his peace, uh, which surpasses all understanding, which is better than the physical thing anyway, okay? Uh, again, we are to let our requests be made known unto God, okay? Uh, Philippians 4 verse 6 says, and then his answer to us is always his peace, okay? Uh, so again, uh, when we pray, okay, uh, it's not about uh, asking God for things. When we pray, it's about God putting us at peace, okay? Uh, and he always answers the prayer of the believer with his peace, all right? Uh, and so again, uh, uh, I thank God for Dennis uh, and his wife. So we'll continue to pray for them as well. I uh, continue to pray for my grandfather uh, and uh, our family as we continue to go through that. Uh, pray for uh, 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 a dear friend of mine, Brother Andre. Uh, just saw a message that he said his wife is, is going into labor right now. And so we'll pray for him. He's uh, out of Cincinnati. Uh, uh, and so we'll be praying for him as well uh, that all goes smoothly. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, we'll thank God for that. Um, also, uh, I think that was it. That was it as far as the announcements. Uh, let's continue to pray for Pastor L. Page and his wife. Uh, again, uh, a lot of you always reach out to me uh, and to see how he's doing. They're, they're doing good. He's still working on Sundays and on Wednesdays, uh, so he can't be here. Uh, but feel free to give him a call, okay? He appreciates uh, those who have been calling, but he, uh, uh, he, he really welcomes you if you call his, if you go to the website, his number is on there. Uh, so again, uh, whenever I do talk to him, I tell him that the, 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 you guys do ask about him, and so uh, you guys can go ahead and give him a call if you want. Uh, uh, he'll be happy to hear from you, I'm sure. Uh, he's work, trying to work <clears throat> some things out to where he can get here on Sundays now. Uh, uh, and so... Uh, uh, that'll be a blessing to have him back in our midst. Uh, uh, so, again, we'll continue to pray for them as well. Uh, uh, nothing else. Let us go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, we're going verse by verse through the book of Corinthians. And it's been very interesting all right, as we go through this book uh, because we're getting to see how Paul is dealing with the Corinthians and also how we ought to deal with people who are carnal minded just as these Corinthians, okay? Uh, they were puffed up, they were high minded against Paul. Uh, and we're going to see Paul is going to have to vindicate his apostleship uh, simply because they were doubting him and who he was. Although the couple of chapters before, Paul was answering some questions that they wrote to him. So if you didn't think somebody was able or qualified to answer your question, why, why even ask, okay? And so again, we're dealing in chapter 9 where Paul is starting off in verse 1. He says, am I not an apostle? Am I not free, okay? And so have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? So he's dealing, okay, uh, 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 with this issue of having to vindicate or, or uh, uh, to qualify himself in the face of these carnal Corinthians, okay? Simply because when it comes to uh, uh, who he was, Paul was very humble in his manner, knowing that he did not want people's faith to rest in who he was or who he thought he was, but he wanted people's faith to rest in the words of God. Uh, that's why when we're talking to people, when we're dealing with individuals, we want to make sure that we do not become the offense, but the word becomes the offense, okay? Uh, because again, the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. So sometimes it may be used not intentionally to harm or to, uh, to, to cause trouble, but because of the way God's word is, it, it's going to cut them. Okay, and that's what we want. We want the word of God to be the offense and, and not us ourselves. Okay, uh, we left off in by, uh, verse 5 here. All right, Paul says, Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as brethren of the Lord, and Cephas? And then he goes into verse 6 and he says, Are I only and Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? All right. Uh, and we're going to get into these verses. I asked some questions on Sunday. We're going to get into these verses. Uh, but first, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your goodness. We thank you for who you are. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for this day. 
We thank you for this hour. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for the cognitive ability to study your word uh, and to study to show ourselves to prove unto you, uh, workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing this word of truth. Uh, Father God, we ask now that you continue to strengthen us and build us up in our inner man, that we may walk in this life uh, uh, according to your will and according to your way. Uh, help us to put on the whole armor of God, that we may withstand the wiles of the devil. Uh, we thank you now, Father God, for... <clears throat> For your peace, Father God, not, then, not, not just peace with you, but the peace of you, uh, that we're able to uh, uh, go about this life, Father God, not worrying, Father God, but understanding uh, not only who we are, but whose we are. And we thank you for that now. Uh, we ask now that you continue to strengthen us, for your grace is sufficient in all that we may go through, uh, knowing that when we're weak, that's when we're actually made strong. And so we thank you for your grace. Uh, we thank you for your protection. We thank you for uh, uh, the things that you allow us to go through uh, and the things that you uh, allow us to have and allow us to see uh, dealing, with those, dealing with the spiritual things that we may be better ambassadors for you. Uh, Father God, we ask now that you continue to strengthen those who are dealing with sickness or pain in the body, uh, ailments or uh, whatever they may be dealing with. Uh, we pray for the saints of God everywhere. Uh, we pray that your peace comfort them and whatever they may be going through. Uh, we pray now for those who are lost in denominational religious systems, uh, uh, that they come into this knowledge of truth, that they come to understanding of who you are, and not just based on the precepts of men, uh, but who you are from your word. And we thank you for that now. Uh, we ask that you help the scales to fall from their eyes, that the glorious light of the gospel may shine into them, and that they may come to the knowledge of truth and be saved. Uh, so in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, all right, uh, uh, we see this. Now, we, I left off in verse 5, okay, talking about uh, this issue in verse 5, all right. It says, have we not power to lead about a sister and wife as well as other apostles, all right, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas, okay? Now, what exactly does this verse mean? Got the hell so bold. I don't hear it. I'm listening. Uh, it's talking about what the what, uh, what the apostles were able to do, right? Okay. Like like in Acts, specifically. So they was given that power in that space through the Holy Ghost to do those things. Okay. All right. But specifically, you're right in that regard. But specifically, when it talks about Leaving have we sister? right a wife? Uh, oh, he just did that. In I thought he was talking about uh in um. I think it was Acts chapter four or five. They were talking about no chapter five. They were talking about a whole bunch of widows. Um, okay. They need to lead them because at that time they didn't have any husbands, so they had the power they needed to be able to lead them. And then uh, he was talking about uh, who was that Stephen and another seven brethren. All uh right. -huh. They had them to be uh, to go and wait the table and do those things because they had to tend to the things that I had to add to just the twelve. They the twelve apostles. They needed to be able to add. Right. To be able to do Which erroneously people call the first deacon of the church in Acts right. six as Stephen because they said they had to tend to the matters of the women and, and those things because the apostles were to tend to the things of God, the word of God. Uh, and the word deacon does not come up until you get to Paul in First Timothy, okay, First Timothy three. All right, so so again, uh, you're right in that aspect, but not necessarily to what this verse is speaking about. Now watch this. Uh, remember what Paul is dealing with in this ver in these verses. Now, what is he dealing with in verses one through four? Defending his apostleship. Uh, to what right. degree or to what manner? Based on how is he going about defending himself in verses one through four? Of First Corinthians nine. What do we go over? How is he going about defending himself? By doing what? By what way is he defending himself? By physically fighting it? What way is he defending himself? Huh? Already, that's what talking. Okay, but, but but how though? What is he saying? What is he doing? As far as what? Huh? As far as how he's defending himself in the first four chapters, because this will give you the answer to well, verse first five. The first four, I'm sorry, first four verses of First Corinthians chapter nine. Oh. By doing what? What is he doing? Asking questions. Asking questions, okay. Yeah. Not only asking questions, but also what? Is he clarifying his his apostleship? He clarifying, but but what is he doing? He's asking questions. So what are the types of questions that he's asking? 
the type of questions rhetorical that, they should, that will rhetorical make you, questions that would define you as an apostle. Right. So he's basically comparing and contrasting yeah. by asking the questions. Or am yeah. I not an apostle? Did I not do these? Things? Right. Did I not do? So he's comparing and contrasting. Right. So yeah. now, when you get to verse four. Uh, uh, verse 3, my answer to them that do examine me is this. Now he's going to go about to say, now, do we not have the power to aid and drink? Okay. Because other apostles do. Am I not an apostle in verse 1? Yes. So do we not have the same power to do these same exact things? Yes. So now he's comparing and contrasting. Remember, Paul says, I come behind the, I'm the very, uh, come behind the very uh, uh, least when it comes to the apostles. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, but he just carries himself humbly. All right, okay. so understand he's he's making a compare and contrasting thing to show. Listen, we have the power to do this. We're just not doing it. We're just not exercising our authority to do so. So all right, now with that in mind, look at verse five again. Have we not power to lead it by a sister or wife as well as other apostles and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Yes. Right, so he, again, he's saying, yes, yeah, so now, why would he say Cephas? Why would he single him out out of the apostles? Because, okay, I get it now. Because of the makeup of the church at the time. Most were Jews, so they would have known Cephas as Peter. Peter was the head. Right, okay, so now, so, Peter, uh-uh, go ahead. All of us can, not just the head, but all of us have been given that power. Right, so now, he says, have we not power to lead about a sister or a wife? Which means that, can't we have a wife? Yes. Now, was Paul married? No. All right, go to 1 Corinthians 7. Now, remember now, a lot of times, although some people, even some people today, Christians even, will call Paul very chauvinistic. Uh, 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 they may call him all types of things, arrogant, whatever. But understand, a lot of times, he's not, because remember Paul says to compare yourself against another, uh, to uh, really uh, deeming yourselves to become fools and unwise, okay. okay? So now, he's not doing this for the sake of buff, puffing himself up. Okay. He's doing this for the sake of, listen, all of these things that these people do, we have the power to do it, but we're not doing it to you. Yeah. We're not using our authority. We're using our liberty not to do these things. Okay. We could be charging you for what we eat and drink. All right, and we're going to get to that as, as the uh, chapter 9 goes on. We're going to get to how he's going to say, now those that preach the gospel ought to live of the gospel. So we could be doing these things, but yet we're not. Okay? All right? All right. And, and again, most pastors, if you understand, good pastors are not in it for the income. They're in it for the outcome. Okay? All right? And, and so preachers want to use these verses to justify them getting paid. All right, and getting paid very lavishly, okay? Uh, but yet and still, Paul is making a point of emphasis to say you don't really have to, okay? Watch this. Look at 1 Corinthians 7. Look at verse 39. Uh, look at this, uh, verse 39, 1 Corinthians 7. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in what? The Lord. Only in the Lord. You see that? He's able to be married, but he just chose what? Not to. So does that make, so Paul said, does that make me less than the least of any apostle because I chose not to be married? All right. Now remember, it was mostly Jews in the audience, so all the Jews at that time would have known exactly who Cephas was, right? Because he was the popular one at this particular time, okay? They would have all known who Cephas was. So he's using this example. Go back to 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 5. Have we not power to lead about a sister or wife? Which means that do we not have the same authority to be married and lead a sister, which is a wife? We have that power to do that, but we're just use, choosing not to. And again, Paul is laying out, he's defending his apostleship by laying out his authority and him not using it, okay? Is that one of the marks they had against him? Like, oh, Paul don't have no wife, so who is he? Uh, that could be it, because remember now, the apostles were married. Right. All right the, and, and again, this is not Bible, okay? This is what some people say. Uh, and again, I have no real answer to this because it's not scripture to define whether this is true or not true. But some people think that Paul may have been married at one point, either his wife died or left him, yeah. okay, because of 
you know, him having to do the ministry, which is why he explains in 1 Corinthians 7, it's better to be not married so you can tend to the things of God. And surely he had a lot of things to tend to given the mystery, this, this dispensation of the gospel that was committed to him, as he says in 1 Corinthians 9, surely he had a lot to deal with, okay? So again, some people say his wife may, may have died or may have left him, which some of the language in chapter 7 would justify why he said those things and gave those particular answers. And again, the Bible does not specifically say, so I don't have an answer to that yeah. to give you biblical uh, 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 right or wrong in that particular case. Yes? I know I'm late and I'm sorry, uh -huh. but you may have even touched it. But here it says, um, have we not had a lead about a sister, a uh -huh. wife? Uh -huh. So a sister, now what I, I looked at something that said a sister might have been a woman that traveled with them, uh -huh. that helped them in the ministry, uh -huh. and maybe like the wife helped with their needs. Right, right. And when it separates them, because in some cases sisters were called the, the wife, wife too. Right, right. But when it separated here, I'm not uh -huh. sure is it, uh -huh. is it a difference there. Right. Now, when it talks about this, it, it, it's really dealing with a wife who is a sister uh, in this particular case. But, uh, but however, so supposed to be working in the gospel. Or... Right, right, right. So uh, there are times where you have different sisters that work in the gospel. In this particular case, he's talking about a sister who is a wife. All right. Okay. So, so, but, but you do have that a lot of times there are women who help within the gospel, uh, which I don't understand why people call Paul a male chauvinist because there are a lot of times he tells uh, to Phoebe and all of these different people, Romans 16, that these are my fellow laborers in the gospel. Okay. Uh, uh, so again, <clears throat> but, but when it says that he's talking about a sister who is a wife, okay, or a wife who is a sister. All right, and so that's what he's dealing with in regards to that, okay? And so now, uh, uh, and again, back to Paul being married, okay? He's basically saying, we have the power to get married. We're just choosing not to. All the way down to this chapter, he's going to talk about, and he's comparing and contrasting, and this is how he's vindicating his apostleship, by comparing and contrasting the things that they could be doing, but they're just choosing not to. The greatest leaders are leaders who do not have to use their authority. If, you, if, the, if your authority is the first thing that you go to as a leader, then you don't lead well. Because a, a true leader does not have to use his authority. Because the way he leads, all right, it, it motivates the people to do what they need to do. All right? A true leader does not have to use, your authority should be the last thing you use, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because you don't, if you lead well, you don't have to yell, you don't have to use your authority. Okay, and so again, what Paul is dealing with is just because I don't do these things does not mean that makes me any less of an apostle. We just choose not to do this because all things are lawful for us to do, but it may not be as beneficial or expedient to do them. Okay, so that's what he's dealing with. And again, you gotta you gotta remember now because in Philippians he says, if anybody wants the glory in the flesh, I more. But with the carnal Corinthians, that's not the way to deal with them. It's not the way the way to deal with them is not to go tit for tat as far as who you think you because they were already what puffed up so that's not the way to deal with these brothers the way to deal with them is a more of a humble approach with the philippians he was saying listen if anybody wants the glory in the flesh i'm more and he gave all the examples as to how and why he was able to glory more in his flesh than they were but understand that wasn't his focal point that's just based on his audience that's the example that he used so here because he's talking to these carnal corinthians who were already puffed up all right the example that he's using is to say things that listen we have this power but we're just not doing it, it doesn't make us any less of an apostle all right now he says have we not power to lead about his sister or wife again rhetorical questions because guess what the, the obvious answer is what yes they had the power to go get married if they wanted to, okay? Look at verse, uh, continuing in verse 5. As well as what? Other what? Apostles. apostles. They had the power and the ability to lead about even the other apostles, which is why in 2 Peter 3, verses 15 and 16, Peter writes about, listen to what the things that Paul has to say, all right? All right? Because the th and now the things that he had to say are hard to be understood, as Peter says. <laughs> Especially when you don't rightly divide. It's very hard to understand. All right? But notice that Paul was able to now, because remember we went over this on Sunday in uh, Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. It says he was to go to the who? The Gentiles, to the kings, and to what? The children of Israel. You see that? So he had the ability to lead all people. All right? Keep going. And as the brethren of the Lord. Okay? And even who? 
and even Cephas. See, that have we not power to lead about even Cephas? Right? And I can imagine, okay, Paul could have used the example, I had to withstand Peter to his face. The whole argument was should we oh, follow okay. Barnabas or should we follow? I mean, not Barnabas. Right. Following uh, what Let's, Barnabas? Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, Apollos. Uh, Apollos. Right. Go back. Go back to since you said that. Go back to First Corinthians chapter one. So he could have just threw out some stuff to be like, right. Hey, y'all follow me instead, but the right. point was it don't matter. Right. Okay. Because the man following the mere man does not matter. Okay. All right. Look at First Corinthians one and look at verse ten. All right, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no what? Divisions. Divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same what? Judgment. Judgment. All right, now, this is a simple statement, okay? But look at how many different churches you have, denominations, different divisions, people saying totally, two, totally different things and reading the same Bible. You see that? So there's a lot of divisions, but we should all be speaking the what? Same, Same thing. thing. Now, the style may be different, okay? All, right? all of that stuff may be different. The character, the personality, that stuff may be different, all right? But the words that we speak should be the what? Same thing. See that? Look at verse 11. For it had been declared unto me of you, my brother, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say that every one of you said, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am who? And I am who? Christ. So understand that there was, there was this contention going on within the Corinthian uh, body about who they were following. Mm -hmm. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 3. And really, as it is today. Same way today. People are worried about who they're following. All right? And, and, and the mere man does not mean anything. Okay? Does not mean anything. People are following people just to, people, everybody wants to get, everybody's using the natural to equate to the spiritual. And the natural realm, who you know could get you closer to that promotion or to that job. So all of those things is who you know, all right, could get you closer to, to getting whatever you need in this natural physical life, okay? Uh, it's all about who you know. People say that all the time. It really is in this natural life, okay? All right? So understand that's the case. But people are even using that in the church. That's going to get you the position if you get in good with the pastor's wife or with the this and that. What, and again, people have this mentality. And it works in the natural. And it does work, even in the church. It does work that way. People get cool with this person, then they're able to be the, you know, the mother over the toilet, toilet, the bathroom in the toilet, okay? And who cleans that? Everybody wants to have a title for something, okay? And it's based on who you know, even in the natural, okay? But when it comes to the things of the spiritual, okay, you are, people are following people blindly. Matter of fact, I had a sister send me something, okay? Uh... And she wanted to hear my thoughts on it. And she sent me something where it was a church that was, uh, uh, I guess, telling people how they ought to give to the church. And they had, through stocks and bonds, through your retirement assets, mm -hmm. through your life insurance, okay? I, I couldn't believe this. Any time I think it can't get any worse, it does, okay? Uh, uh, and, and it was a whole website. They were explaining it to them and everything, how you sign your life insurance over and all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. And people are doing it because they think that makes them closer to God. Retirement assets, and they had all kind of stuff on there. I really could not believe what I was reading, okay? And then it had from, from oh, hold on one second, I need to look this up. It said from God's own heart or something like that. that the ministry was called from God's own heart or something, something mm -hmm. like that. And I'm thinking, well, what from God's heart is this, is, is this about? Because again, <laughs> you have people signing up with retirement beneficiaries of your life insurance policies, all stocks, bonds, all of these different things that they had um, as ways to give. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, if I wanted to give, then obviously I know that is a way for me to give. But I don't need to publicize that. As that. And again, they publicize it in such a way where it's like God honors this. Mm -hmm. You see that God honors. And, and again, a lot of these things is because people are following people right. and not following the word. Okay? Mm -hmm. And not studying for to show themselves approved, not unto me, not unto you, but unto who? Unto wow. God. Mm -hmm. You see that? What, what does God want with your life insurance policy? What does he want with that? He can't do anything. What, 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 he, he owns everything. 
And anyway, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth in which he owns. So what does he need with your money that's going to disappear anyway? Right? But again, people, just like the Corinthians, just like we see today, they're making, they have, there's contentions among them about who they're following. All right? When that's not really the issue. Uh -huh. Yeah, and even when you read that, the question is, are they leading you to the right, in the right way, the right form? Remember what we said that, that it doesn't uh, come down to how much you pay, it's how much you're getting out. Right, right. If you leave me right, I don't mind you getting that. But right. if you leave me telling me I got to go this way or I right, got to right. do that, when it just says I didn't need to do and, and, and we'll get into this because Paul is going to get into it in chapter 9, and we're going to get into this hopefully tonight. We're going to get into this how Paul talks about giving when it says he that is, uh, labors in the word is worthy of double honor. We're yes. going to get into that, okay? Because again, Preachers use that, but there's some stipulations to what you got to be to it, to that verse. Okay, there's some prerequisites. Okay, uh, uh, that people aren't following, but we'll get to that in a second. Look at First Corinthians three, all right, and look at verse three. First Corinthians three, verse three: For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one said I am of Paul and another I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believe? That's it. That's the only thing that separates them other than the fact that Paul was the, you know, was given a dispensation of the gospel. But they're still mere what? Men. We don't follow Paul. We follow Christ as through Paul's message and which Christ gave him. Okay. That, so, so understand now. And even as the Lord gave to every man, I have planted Apollos water, but God giveth the increase. So need, now look at verse 7. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that what? Water. But God that giveth it what? Increase. I'm not doing this for any type of accolade from you. I'm doing this, okay, for God to get the glory. I'm not doing this for any accolade from you. But people in the church, that's why they do things for likes on Facebook, okay? All right, they do things to for people to say, oh that, oh that pastor, know that Bible. What is that going to get? What is that going to give you? There, there's no, there's no. I'm studying to show myself approved unto God, not you or what you think you can tell me. Because again, for you to tell me that I know the word and you don't know it, what? I mean, is that really a compliment? You don't even know it. So, I, so I can know uh, uh, two plus two is four and know more than you. So really, is that really a compliment? You see what I mean? So, so you can't get caught up in that, which is the same thing that the Corinthians were doing. So he pointed out Cephas and singled him out because he would have been the popular one that the Jews would have known about to follow. And he says, listen, I, don't I even have the power to lead about Cephas, a wife, other apostles? Do we not have the same power? Okay. Now, let, let me deal with this issue real quick. All right. Now. Who is the who does the Roman Catholic Church call their pope? Huh? Peter. Peter. Yeah. Okay. Peter. Now, what what's the issue with that as it pertains to what we're talking about? Not another Peter out there. In verse five, not so much that. Go back to First Corinthians nine. Yeah. And verse eight, just to finish this point of First Corinthians three, he that planted and he that watered are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Okay? All right, now go back to 1 Corinthians 9. As it pertains to this issue of a wife and then pointing out peeps, Cephas, as it has to deal with the Roman Catholic Church, what, what is the issue? Oh, they don't have no he, he didn't have a wife. Huh? He didn't have a wife. And what, what's the case? The Pope don't have, don't have wives. Don't have wives. If you're itching a book. Right? So, so how do you explain that if Peter is your Pope, which he really wasn't, they, Paul started the Roman church, but if, if that's the case, if that's the case, they're following Peter, but Peter was married. Right. Go to Matthew 8. And again, don't follow the Pope or me or whoever. Follow the word, okay? Look at Matthew, uh, what did I say, 14? Eight. eight. Okay, so 8 and 14 should be. Yeah, Matthew 8, verse 14. Now, and when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's 
mother lay and sick of a what? Fever. So Peter's wife's mother means he was married, married okay? Mm -hmm. But the Pope today don't allow them to get married right. because they're following after Peter. All right? Yeah, now let that sizzle in. Go back to 1 Corinthians 9, all right? <laughs> Go back to 1 Corinthians 9. All right, look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, look at verse 6. First Corinthians 9, verse 6. All right, now, or, all right, so now, verse, let's read verse 5. Have we not power to lead about a sister or wife as well as other apostles and as brethren of the Lord and Cephas, or, okay, he's continuing with the same thought here, or I only and Barnabas have not we power to do what? Forbear working. Forbear working? What is he saying here? Forbear working for righteousness sake. Not, not working not to earn a living? Huh? Not working. Can they not, not have to work to earn Okay, so now, what are we talking about? What is Paul doing? Comparing. All right. To, to vindicate his apostleship. Yeah. And what is he comparing? Oh, Peter didn't have to work. To what they're doing to, for the others? Uh, oh, the church, the, the temple. The temple workers didn't have to work. Okay. All right. So now... He didn't have to if he didn't want to. Again, who's the audience now? Jews. Jews. All right, so he's talking to them about things that they would have known, no. okay, by being a Jew. Now, when it comes to this issue of, now, who is Barnabas? Let's break this all the way down. Let's, who is Barnabas? Uh, was he traveling with him? Right, he was traveling with Paul. Remember, what, 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 is it, what does his name mean? Remember? Son of consolation. Consolation, okay. All right, I'll see you, Mark. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, so, yeah. so his name means consolation because at the time when Paul was about to really be persecuted at the very beginning of this ministry, he needed to be consoled, okay? So now, Paul, uh, so Barnabas here, all right, it says, I or I only and Barnabas have not we power to forbear working. What does forbear mean? Don't work. Not work. Refrain right. from. Right. To refrain from. Okay, so now, do they did they have the power to refrain from working? Yeah. Yes, they did. All right, go to Luke. Question was, though. Go to Luke chapter 12. Go to Luke chapter 12. Let's start at verse 24. Let's start at verse 22. All right, Luke 12, verse 22, we have it. All right, and he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? Okay? And, excuse me. And, and, let, let me just say this. I hope I don't offend anybody by saying this. Right, but when you see the order, of the divine order of things, okay, uh, the human life, okay, as it pertains to God, is more valuable or important than the animal life, okay? Uh, we In this society, we seem to get that confused, okay? Uh, and again, I'm not, I'm, I love animals and pets and all of that too, okay? Uh, 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 so, so again, but when it comes to the things of God, okay, the human life, God has given the humans more authority, more power over the animals. And we see that in there. If, you're, if, if, the, the, if the birds and things don't have to work, okay, then surely, my human creation does not have to do these things, okay? I just want to point that out. Uh, 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 yes, yes. Yeah. Look, at, look at verse 20. Look at verse 25. Yeah. <laughs> look at verse 25, okay? Uh, now, and which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Okay? We understand what he's saying here, all right? Don't take any thought for the things that you need to do 
simply because surely I can provide for you. Now, what is the context in which he's saying this? Because they were about to be going through Jacob's trouble. They were about to be going through the tribulation, okay? When most people read this verse, it's also stated in Matthew 6, verses 25 through 33, okay? Uh, uh, when people read these verses, they think this is actually talking about now mm -hmm. because they don't rightly divide, okay? All right, so now, they're thinking that God will provide for mm -hmm. you. You know, God will provide your natural, your physical, but that's not the case, okay? Uh, uh, that's not the case. Now, look at verse 27. Consider the lilies, how they grow... Luke chapter 12, verse 27. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Okay? If then God so clothed the grass, which is today, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe ye, you, O ye of little what? Faith. Faith. Remember now, during the tribulation, they would not have any means to buy or sell other than to take the mark of the beast and become a son of perdition. Perdition meaning there's no more salvation that you can do after that. Okay, so that's the, that's the seriousness of this particular teaching now. It's easy for people to say today, oh, this is God talking today, when you don't have a care in the world, how you can go down to the grocery store and buy some bread and right. food. Right. And go to the shopping center and buy you some clothes. Right. Even if you broke, you can go do that. With no thought in the world. Mm -hmm. But remember now, during this time, that's why this is so valuable and important to understand the context in which this is written. What in the world is he talking about lilies and clothes and shoes and raiment and food for? That's stuff we get every day. We give away stuff. We give away food and clothes and shoes today. But understand how serious this is, all right? And, and again, try to picture this because we have it so freely. It's hard to picture this being without it, okay? But understand they won't even have the ability to go buy or sell anything without taking, without taking the mark of that beast, which is going to cause them, all right, to be eternally damned, okay? All right? So that's the seriousness of what he's teaching them. That's why he's saying, oh, ye of little faith. If you read this today, I'm little faith. Nah, I just know I can go down here and buy it. Okay? So understand, but he's teaching them about it because before the kingdom could come, the king was there, Jesus was there, but before the kingdom could come, there had first to be what? Jacob's trouble. The time of tribulation, great tribulation. Then the kingdom would come. Okay? But understand it. That's why he's teaching them and preparing them that how to go through what they needed to go through. And understand that if God can clothe the grass and the animals, then surely he's going to do it for them. When he made a promise of covenants to them to do so. You see that? Look at this. Verse 29. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be of doubtful mind. The opposite of faith is what? Yeah. That's why he said, oh, ye of little what? Faith. Because if you don't have faith, you tend to what? Doubt. Yeah. And uh, like we just talked about in Romans 14, 23, anything that's not of faith is what? Sin. Amen. Okay? Look at verse 30. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that you have need of these things. He knows that already, what they have need of, especially because if he does not give it to them, he's going to cause them to be eternally what? Damn. Do you see the seriousness of this and how this does not apply today? You see that? Look at this. Look at verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these what? Amen. Shall be what? Amen. Now, all, okay, what does the word all mean? Everything. Everything. Huh? I say inclusive. Inclusive. Everything. Now, all has a context. It means all, and it means inclusive. It means everything, okay? Now, if I said I'm going to give you all my money and I only have $5, then guess what you get? $5. $5. Yeah. But it is all, though, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's all my money. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So now, all in this context does not mean the house, the job, the car, as people suggest. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and he's going to give you all this stuff, the desire. He'll give you the desire. Let's take some away from Psalms 34. He'll give you the desires of your heart. That's not what this verse is talking about. All is the context to which we just read. Shoes, uh, clothes, raiment, food, drink. He's going to give you all these things at a time of tribulation where you won't be able to buy or sell it. You see that? That's the seriousness of this. So guess what he's saying? 
Seek not what you shall eat in these things. Rather seek the kingdom of God. Because if you seek me, guess what? I will. I am Jehovah what? Jireh. I will do what? Provide. You see that? God is not necess necessarily providing you with what you're going to eat tomorrow. All right? People meal prepping and all of that. You need to know what you're going to eat tomorrow. You need to take thought for that. Not in the sense that they will. Okay, because they won't be able to go home and cook and open up the cabinet and say, hey, do I want some, do I want some noodles? Do I want some ravioli? What, what do I want? They, we have a choice to do that today. They don't have that choice. So they need to seek God. Okay, but we understand now that the food was, is, and clothes and all that, the kingdom of God is more than just that. It's about righteousness. Mm -hmm. So seek me first. Don't worry about this little stuff here. That's easy for me. That's what he, God is basically, that's easy for me. Don't worry about that stuff, okay? Look at this. Verse 32, fear not, little flock, for it is my father's, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the what? Kingdom. Yeah. All right, now, sell that ye what? Yeah. You see that? Now, for people who say, for people who say, I don't follow Paul, I follow Jesus. I don't know nobody who sold all they had. Nobody. As a matter of fact, if they continue to follow Jesus in that particular doctrine, remember now, in Acts 5, if they didn't sell, you were killed for not doing it. You see that? Uh, 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 Ananias and Sapphire, they withheld and lied to the Holy Ghost, and they were immediately what? Killed. Why? Because back then, it was a, Israel was a, of a common wealth. All right? Now, the only communistic system that works is God's system. Not anyone today. Okay, so back then they had a common wealth, which means that they had all things in what? Common. Which means that whenever by, whoever worked, bring everything and sell it and lay it at the apostles' feet. That's what they were to do. Who's doing that today? Who would even trust somebody to do that today? First of all, there's no apostles. All these people who sit up under apostles today, why they not laying all their stuff at the apostles' feet? They don't trust them that much to be a, an apostle, right? Because that's what they were to do because they were supposed to have a what? Common wealth, all right? That's why it says this. Now, go to uh, uh, um, Ephesians 2 real quick. Go to Ephesians 2. Peter told them they are. Uh... They out there to get you, man. You see those footprints under the door? <laughs> she dropped dead. <laughs> she followed the husband. Follow the husband. All right. Again, don't follow no man. Okay? All right? Not the preacher, not your bishop, not your apostle. You better listen to the word, okay? Yes. Ephesians 2, verse 11. How many members of the little flock were available then? Was it over 2,000? Available when? At the time when they were waiting, when they were giving everything to Stephen. Yes, because it was uh, Acts 2 of 3,000 added to the church, then it became yeah, 5,000 added to the church. Right, so there was at least 8,000, we know, Thank plus the 120, so that's 8,120 at least. Right. So I yeah. just want to make sure that we know that that's a lot of money that would have been there for a little time. Right, right, right. And again, because why, why would he say to sell all they had? As a matter, we're going to go back to that because it's going to tell you. But look at this real quick, Ephesians 2, look at verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the common wealth of what? Yeah. <clears throat> See that? So we're not to do that because we were aliens from the commonwealth. Strangers from the covenants of what? Promise. We don't, we're not attached to God by any covenant. We have access to God by what? Faith. They had access to God by the keeping of the what? Covenants of the laws. Do they have access to God? They don't have access to God now either. Not, not, right, not now either. All right? They would have to get it through us by believing that Christ, first of all, for the Jew, is the Son of God, which they, most of the Orthodox Jew does not believe. All right? Then believing in his death, burial, and resurrection, okay? which they don't believe that. Okay? They still think they got access to God. Right. They still, think, they still think that they're the apple of God's eye. Not in this, not in this dispensation. Okay? All right? Not in this dispensation. All right? Now, let's go back real quick to finish that point. Go back to Luke chapter 12. <clears throat> Go 
Luke 12, verse 32, fear not, little flock, what is your father's good pleasure to give you the what? Kingdom. But in order to get the kingdom, the very next instruction, okay, is to seek the kingdom. He's going to give it to you. But first, you got to do what? Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth what? Corrupted. So to, in order to receive that kingdom, he, you had to sell all this material stuff that was going to be burnt up anyway. And now I've even heard a preacher say that this verse is talking about where it says, uh, uh, provide, uh, uh, provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that filleth not. They're saying that this means don't, don't even have a 401k. Okay? So, again, first of all, this is not our doctrine. Second of all, it's definitely not talking about no 401k. Okay? Uh, so, so but, but again... Don't follow the man, follow the, the teaching of the doctrine, okay? Because again, you got people running around here with no 401k, okay? No, right, no, 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 any types of means of planning financially, okay? All right? And, and just, just lost because of what some preacher told them, all right? So watch this now. Uh, uh, now, go back to 1 Corinthians 9. Now, and again, we went to all those verses because we're talking about Paul forbearing, having the power to forbear working. Because remember, the apostles had the power of God told them, don't what? Work. Don't do all of this stuff. Right? So surely, Paul and Barnabas has the same what? Power. Let's go to a couple verses that, that speak on this. Look at verse 9, verse six, uh, chapter 9, verse 6. Or I only and Barnabas have we not, have not we power to forbear what? Work. Working. Go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Look at chapter number... Three. Yeah, Second Thessalonians chapter three. And let's let's start at verse seven. We have it? All right, now let's know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be what? Charged. Charged. Chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not what? Power. power. Now, we, we have the power and the authority to charge you and to eat of your food and of your drink. We have that power. But to make ourselves an, an, an sample unto you to do what? Follow, follow us. Go to 1 Thessalonians 2. Was in sample part of the group that you're in? Right. right. In sample is, a, is a, 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 an, an example within a particular group. An example is X, Outside. meaning out. Right. All right. So in order to be an in sample, it had to be a bunch of believers there, right. which it was, okay? So none yeah. of us be charging one another. Huh? So none of us should be basically charging one another. Right, 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 right. Uh, and, and not in that sense, but more in the sense of the person teaching. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, yeah. If you have a business deal with somebody, you're providing a service. You need to get paid. No, it's okay. charity. If you're doing the gospel. Okay. Yeah. 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 Expound right. on that. On what? Those verses there, and go to verse 13 and read that. Where it tells you that little is. <laughs> what? Be not weary and well doing. Yes. What about it? Expound on what? Is that telling you not to worry because you got a little something, or is that telling you something else? We got a, we got a little something as far as what? Well, when you hear them talking about bread and saving bread and something, they uh -huh. say, now, be not worried and well doing. Does it mean that because I have something of my own, I shouldn't be worried about it? Well doing. No, no, no. no. See, go, go to second. He's in second Thessalonians 3. Look at the context of this. All right. Go, go to first, second Thessalonians 3. Look at verse 10. He's in verse 13 of 2 Thessalonians 3 where it says, But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. Right, now, he, he also in Galatians 6 and 9, he says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall yeah. reap if we what? Thank Thank not. not. Okay, so he's talking about eternal rewards. Remember, okay. we have to, all right, uh, uh, for, the, for those of us who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All right, now, watch this. Look at verse 10 of 2 Thessalonians 3. For even when we were with you, this we command you, that if any would not work, neither should he do what? Eat. So, so what he's saying is, now, we have the authority that because we're working, 
okay, as the apostles of Christ, we have the authority and power to charge you, okay, because that's how they made their bread. And remember, Acts 8, 10, and 3, Paul was a what? What was his occupation? Tent a lowly tent maker. Lowly compared to who the Corinthians thought they were and who they thought their apostles should have been. But that's what he did, work with his hands, labor with his hands, because he did not want to be chargeable to them. Okay, look at verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are what? Busy bodies, right? Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they do what? Work. 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 But at the Thessalonians, he's saying, and eat their own what? Bread. Yeah. But ye, brethren, be not weary in what? Well, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. So he's saying that you don't have to be worried and well well doing, okay, worried and doing well, uh, as far as especially as it pertains to giving the gospel mm -hmm. and working and doing things, okay? Because there were some people that were just busy bodies weren't doing anything. Yeah, that's, that's why right, we right. should be right. founded on. Yeah, yeah. Because that sounds just like most of the churches today. You go in, everybody talking about everybody and nothing going on. Right, right. Just busy bodies. Right, right. Absolutely. Uh, and, and again, uh, that's because there's no doctrine being taught, okay? Mm -hmm. And again, no matter what church you go into, doctrine or not, you, people are human, okay? Uh, so again, if you leave one church and think you're going to come here to find the perfect church, you're not going to find it here either, okay? I'm going to just let you know. Now, but the thing about it is you don't leave a church because of bad behavior, because you're going to get that at every church, okay, including the ones that teach right, right doctrine. All right, now, you lead because of bad doctrine, not bad behavior, okay? Uh, because understand, even those of us who know truth and who are saved, all right, can live lives of dishonor to God, okay? So you don't leave a church because of bad behavior, because you'll get that at the next church, okay? Somebody will treat you wrong at the next church, and the next church, all right? But the right doctrine prevents most of that, all right? You know, the scripture said that you have to almost leave the world to get away from evil, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's always yeah, here. yeah, always, always here. right. Which is again why we endure. That's why you don't leave a church for bad behavior or somebody talking about you. All right, you, you, know you what go, that is? Uh, oh, it's in the it's in the Gospels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know it off the back. Yeah, yeah. I don't know it off the back. First Thessalonians two. All right, and look at verse nine. I'll get it for you by the time we leave, though. Look at uh, First Thessalonians two, verse nine. Verse. First, go to First Thessalonians now, chapter two, verse nine. Paul says, "For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be charged well unto any of you. We preach you, preached unto you the what? So we labored day and night just so we wouldn't charge you. But yet, and still, the past of the day, I got to preach day and night. Of course, I need a salary." Hold on now, you, you know, and, and again now, all right, let's go back to First Thessalonians, uh, First uh, Corinthians 9. So remember now, they had the authority to do so, but it was not expedient to do. Now, matter of fact, go to 2 Corinthians 11. Let's look at this real quick. Look at 2 Corinthians 11, look at verse 7. Second Corinthians 11, verse 7. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? The word of God should be free. Okay? I robbed other churches taking wages of them to do what? You service. Now, when he's talking about he robbed them, he's not talking about going there with a stick up with a gun now. What he's saying is that he took money from them in order to do them service. Now, who was the other churches that he's talking about? Macedonia. Which would, which would have been who? Ephesians or? Uh, uh, what Macedonia? Macedonia? Yeah, what group of people? Gentiles? Uh-uh. Ephesians. Well, yeah, possibly Gentiles, but what group of people? Paul wrote to them. Because yeah, I know he just said them. they were sending gifts for him. To make right, who was that that did that? Macedonia. Yeah, who was that that did that? Which brother yeah, did that? Macedonia. They sent them to, unto him the gifts and all those things. All right, let's keep reading. You think about it. All right, look at this, verse 9. And when I was present with you, and, and listen, watch this now. I was present with you and what? Wanted. And wanted. 
So he was with them. There were things that he actually wanted and probably needed. But guess what? I was charged with a what? No yeah. man. Galatians? No. Philippians. Charged with meaning he was not a burden to them. Right, financially speaking, because he didn't take any wages from them. Wages from them. All right. Now, for that which was lacking to me, the brother which came from Macedonia supplied it. Okay? And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, why? Because I love you not, God knoweth. Okay? So again, he's saying, do I do all of this because I don't love you? God knoweth. He understands my intention. But yet I have to defend my apostleship to you all. And if anybody is saved in the Lord, okay, and, and are the fruit of my apostleship, surely it's you Corinthians. That's what he's saying, okay? Go back to 1 Corinthians 9. Yes. So, so we see that he did receive gifts, but not uh -huh. from the Corinthians. The Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Right. But why? Did why what? Because, did he see something in them that... He sees they needed him, that's what. Right, right. The, the gospel was more important to them than, them, than him charging them to give it to them. So there was no need to give them the gospel, okay? Because again, that would make them charge, that would make Paul just like everybody else. Uh, matter of fact, watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians 9. I'm just going to show you here. They were actually, they were actually basically paying other people and not paying Paul. But that's what I don't right. understand, though. Right. What? But why were, I mean, he was giving them the gospel. It's like they didn't respect him because he didn't charge them. Oh, yeah. Right, 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 which is the same thing you see today <laughs> in church. Who do you think the people give all these money to? Is it a pastor that's preaching truth? No, I don't get no salary, okay? Not that I want one, I'm just saying. Anybody that's preaching truth, okay, they're not, they're, they're not taking salaries from the church. It's only the people who don't because and they use some of these scriptures to force people or, or, or deceive people into giving as if it's going to get them closer to God. So, again, because of who Paul was, right, they would rather take the boastful person and just pay him all the money as if they were, that, that, that's why Paul has to defend himself. They will fly in like an evangelist. Right, right. TV. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. Technically. Just because right. of their esteem of past the truth. Right. They, he, he has the real gospel. He right. He's prosperous. Right. This I guy just don't see nothing wrong in print. Uh, uh, there's, no, no, there's nothing wrong, okay? With him a pastor. Right, there's nothing, the right, right. Now, and again, we don't have time to do it tonight, okay. but we'll get to that on Sunday. There's nothing wrong with receiving a wage, okay? As a as a pastor of a church, there's nothing wrong with that. He has right? power to do it. He, you have the power and authority to do it. So did Paul. There's nothing wrong with it. All right. The problem comes, okay, when you're not teaching the right doctrine. Right. Okay. Right. So that's where the problem comes. And most of these preachers that are preaching tithing and all this money stuff and prosperous, they're not teaching the right doctrine. Okay. So that becomes the issue. It's not that pastors aren't worthy of of the service. Because God always intended for those who live of the God, preach the God, preach the gospel, ought to live of the gospel, yeah, just right? That should be the case. But the only people that's living off the gospel, or not even the gospel, the only people that's living off the things of God are the people that's teaching the wrong doctrine. It's hard for a person teaching truth just to only be a preacher. You got some of these preachers who are, 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 are on the Forbes list, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're making a lot of money. Okay, so, so, and they're not teaching anything close to the right doctrine. So do you think that's because people don't gravitate to the truth? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the words Paul even they said, they, they would rather gravitate towards darkness than light. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so. it wouldn't be wrong if we had enough people that to take care of pastors. No, that wouldn't be wrong at all. That, as a matter of fact, that's the way God intended it. And again, Sunday we'll get into this issue of money and and. All this, but, but I'm going to read this and then we'll get out of here. Look at 1 Corinthians 9. Look at verse 12. Uh, look at verse 11. Again, we'll get to these verses, but look at this real quick. 1 Corinthians 9. Look at verse 11. 
if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing that we should reap your carnal things? It speaks exactly to what you're talking about. If I get paid a salary for preaching truth, is that is that such a such something big to it? No, it's just if I'm giving you truth, that's more valuable than the money you would Amen. give me. You see that? Uh, so again, there's nothing wrong with it, okay? But it's putting it into perspective. If, if we have sown to you the spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? There's nothing wrong with that. That's what he's saying. Now, look at verse 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? So you're paying other people, are not we rather to receive it than these other people? Right? And as a preacher of doctrine of truth, I would think the same thing. Okay? If anybody's going to get paid all this money, wouldn't it rather be the people that's preaching truth? You see what I'm saying? So, so but again, uh, but I, I don't believe, and again, if I get paid a salary here, then God bless you, okay? I don't believe, okay, in making a million dollars off the backs of other people, okay, and, and call it a, you know, God's work, okay? This is, this is a privilege and an honor to do this. I'll do it for free, which is what I'm doing, okay? Because the issue is not what I can receive out of this. Uh, what I can receive as far as income, but it's the outcome that I'm more concerned about, okay? Uh, uh, so, again, uh, uh, if there's enough people to do that and give a salary, then, again, I'm not going to be disrespectful and say, no, I, I'll, I'll appreciate it and move on, but that's not my focal point, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. For those of you who weren't here, when I first started the ministry, the first service, I said, I'll pay you to preach, okay? Which means that I'll pay you to come sit here and listen. I'll pay for everything. Why? Because the gospel is more important to me. Okay, the gospel is more important now. Just as Paul, what I do with I labor with my hands, I go to work. Okay, that's how I receive my income. Okay, so understand that I would rather for the gospel to be the most important thing. But it wouldn't be wrong for the people to say, "Hey, we want to give him a salary and, and go." That wouldn't be wrong. Now the problem is, just like with all the things of God that are for the good. All right, Satan makes it to, for bad, okay? Everything that God intended for good, the devil means it for evil. Mm -hmm. So now you got preachers who are not teaching anything that's receiving all this money, oh, right? And, and so that now they, they took the things of God and just destroyed it. Mm -hmm. So now you got people that only really give money to the church, period, okay? Whether, whether teaching right or wrong doctrine, simply because of, uh, of people just basically stealing other people's money. Uh, so, so again, but, but the issue is, Paul says, nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ, which is exactly what most of these people are doing. Again, I've heard people say, I don't, I'm not even going to come preach in somebody's pulpit unless it's for at least 100,000. So you mean to tell, so you mean to tell me that the gospel, the free gospel of Christ cannot be heard unless you get $100,000. I got to do a lot of things when I get up there. But the thing about it, you're right, right. Then you got to pay. I, I've heard preachers say, well, I can't come unless my armor bearer, my musician, my organ, they got to get paid to come too. Now, what? And then I heard people say, because the obvious question would be, what you need all the people for? Well, God works, uh, works, God works for me uh, as a group. Our, uh, the anointing is all of us. What? It, 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 that, that really, that, you know, a lot of times, again, I'm human, okay? So a lot of times, okay, I really want to get in front of these people that say stuff like that, okay? And I really want to get in front of them in, a, in, in front of an audience, okay? Just so the scripture could be, so as the scripture says, Romans 3, verse 4, that God be true and every man a liar. Because God don't need you nor your entourage for his gospel to be, to, to be brought forth. Amen. So for you to think that is very arrogant, okay? But people even think something crazy like that. Uh -huh. I think that's why God judged the heart. It's a heart issue. Right, right. So it, it, shows, what you, it shows what you're in it for. Like, right. you know, we do a lot of yeah. stuff for the kids yeah. and those stuff. Right. Most of the stuff is pro bono because right. you want to make sure they get what they need. Yeah, exactly. Even if it was a charge to it, you wouldn't be able to get it. So it's a heart right. thing. Right, right. And, and that, that, that's it. Because, again, uh, uh, I went out there with the kids today. And uh, at Tech, because I always go out there to help them to work out there, start their summer program today. And one of the parents, they had like orientations, so one of the parents were out there, and he was like, uh, you don't get paid for coaching out here? Because, they, you know, the coach introduced me and gave my resume. And so he said, you don't get paid for coming out with the guys? I said, no, I come out here, first of all, to stay in shape, <laughs> but also to help the kids. You know, what am I going to get paid the salaries but to do something I'm going to do anyway? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work out anyway, okay? And so I just come up here to help the kids to give them a vision that if I made it to the NFL from here, so can you. You see that? So, again, that's a very good point. It's what you're in it for, 
Okay, uh, and again, when it comes to this issue of money, they say money is a hard thing to talk about in the church. Uh, and, and I'm so opposed to talking about it from a perspective of that because I don't want people to look and say, oh, this is the same as every other church. Because that's how people categorize you. This is the same as every other church, okay? We have rent here. We know exactly what the rent is. We have lights. Right? I don't have anything from you in regards to what we need to pay for. And God designed it so that a grace church, grace preacher, should be able to live off the gospel. That's how he designed it. All right? But people are being so deceived, even to themselves, teachers having their own itching ears, all right, that they're giving all their money away all right, to people who don't even deserve it as, a, as according to God's word. All right? Mm -hmm. But, but again, we're going to get into all of that. Uh, so if you want to hear about money in the church, tune in on Sunday, okay? So we'll talk a lot about that on Sunday. Uh, as it pertains to these verses that they try to use about the ox being malted and all of that, uh, and double honor and reward and all of that. So we're going to get into all of that, and I'll break it all the way down on Sunday, okay? Lord willing. Uh, nothing else? Any other questions or comments, observations? I think that they do. I think that the preachers do preach oh, yeah, the gospel. Yeah. They definitely preach the gospel. Uh -huh. But they don't rightly divide. Did I say but in their mind, mind they're preaching, they right. get paid, it's work. Right, right. Up, I'm coordinating, I'm organizing, and all right. the other. They but they're looking at it, they're looking at it as a service, okay? Right. As opposed to an honor. Right. This is a. I mean, an ambassador. right. That that's the whole key. I'm an ambassador for Christ. That's so, right. uh, and right. so again, and then most people that think it's only one gospel. So you know, so you got all kind of stuff that's going on. But yeah, that 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 is the case, and it's 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 very disturbing. Okay, it's very disturbing because so many people are being so deceived. Right. All right. Uh, but we're we're uh, just to call out. It's Uncle Billy's birthday today. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, want, I wanted to mention that because as a matter of fact, I was talking to somebody earlier today that watches the ministry, uh, uh, and I get this a lot. Everybody loves Uncle Billy, okay? Well, the people don't learn everybody uh, because he was saying how that he said, man, you know, I love your ministry because the fact that you get to ask those questions. He said, because I think that's how I really learn because he said, man, I, I want to be there because sometimes I'd be like, man. Damn, I'm gonna ask this question right here. Here go Uncle Billy. And so, yeah. So I wanted to shout out Uncle Billy uh, uh, for his birthday that's is today. The problem, the problem is y'all let us get mileage. That's the problem. Just like the school, you start teaching and the questions start popping. Right, right. That's the that, good part. That's the good part about yeah. it. So, but again, uh, thankful for everybody's birthdays. But I wanted to say that because Uncle Billy is like the most popular person in our church. So, so. So, but again, we thank we thank God for him and all of you. Okay, so nothing else. We'll pick it up on uh, Sunday. Uh, let us pray, Father God. We thank you now for your grace, your mercy, your truth. We thank you for your love. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, we. Pray.